What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So we're continuing our series on some of the best extensions for architectural modeling inside of SketchUp. In today's video, we're going to check out an extension that allows us to create smart profiles and assemblies inside of our models. This is part of a complete series about extensions for architectural modeling specifically. I have created a complete guide for my top architectural modeling extensions that you can check out. So that list is gonna contain both free and paid extensions that allow you to do everything from creating doors and windows to creating cabinets and roofs to doing a whole bunch of things that are very helpful for architecture. So if you wanna check out that list, make sure to download it at the sketchupessentials.com slash architecture extensions. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in today's video, we're going to talk about Profile Builder 3, which is, is an extension for SketchUp that's used to create smart profiles and assemblies inside of your models. So this is an extension created by the guys over at Mindsight Studios, and the download link for this extension is inside of the Architecture Extensions Guide. So I will link to that in the notes down below. And so the way this extension works is it creates profiles and it creates assemblies. And so profiles are very simple shapes shapes, kind of like these, um, that are basically shapes that get extruded along a path. So similar to what happens with the follow me tool, except that this is a much smarter extension for doing that. And so let's say, for example, that we wanted to create like a grade beam, kind of like this one for a foundation for a building. Well, we would go into our profile builder dialog, and what we would do is we would just click the plus button with a profile selected. So in this case, this would be our grade beam. So you can see how what that does is that basically brings in that profile that we've created into your profile dialog. Well now, I could take that and I could extrude it along this path and then I could start editing it and making changes. So like for example, you can see how the insertion point of this object was in the middle. Well we could adjust that so that whenever we do this, so that whenever we use this assembly, it gets brought in based on the top middle point of this foundation. And the nice thing about this is you don't have to redraw these. You can just select a profile that's been extruded and you can just click the edit properties button and you can just select the properties you want to edit and apply that. And so what that does is that makes this really easy to make changes and adjustments to things inside of your model. And so like for example, let's say we wanted this profile to have a concrete material applied to it. We could click this drop down and just select a concrete material. Then we could just update this and update the material and apply that to this assembly. So you can see how making that change is really easy. You could also, like let's say we decided this didn't need to be on a grade beam, but rather it needed to be on more of a foundation wall. We could take this profile and create a new one, just call it foundation wall edit our insertion point and edit our material and then you could actually take this profile and update this with the new profile that we've created without having to go back in and delete this out and reselect your path and all of this. So this is very powerful for working with simple profiles. It also has a tool where you can edit the path that this follows along. So let's say for example that this building we added a little bit over here. Like, let's just say that we did that. Well, what you could do is you could come in here and double click on this profile and then there's actually a tool in here for editing the path of the active member and we could just come in here and we could just draw over this path like this erase out the old path and then click outside of this and you can see how this automatically adjusts where your profile is here or your found or this automatically adjusts where your foundation wall is so you can come in here and you can edit things like that path really easily this, there's a very powerful tool set in here for creating simple profiles like this. You can also save them to a library. So if you wanna create a library of different things like different kinds of base or something like that, you can save all of those for access later. Um, and it's very easy to access this. Note that this can also extrude an object along a path that doesn't have any thickness. So like this gutter, for example, this gutter doesn't have any thickness. It's just kind of a profile and you can use that to really quickly create a gutter that looks like this in your models. But really where the power of Profile Builder comes into play, and I'm going to undo this path edit, um, 
just for right now, where the power of Profile Builder comes into play is actually in its ability to create assemblies. So profiles are a great tool, but what assemblies do is assemblies allow you to combine both profiles, which are objects that you extrude along a path, and also components. So imagine if the Follow Me tool could not only extrude an object along a path, but also place components along a path. That's basically what this extension does. And so like for example, let's say I wanted to add wall framing to this. Um, there's, you can create an assembly that actually adds the studs inside of this in a smart way. And so we're gonna use the path selection tool just to make sure that this is facing the right direction when we do this. But there's a path selection tool in here that allows you to create smart paths. And then you can actually build an assembly like this one along that path. So you can see how this particular assembly, it comes in here and it actually adds in your stud framing, it adds in your insulation, and it also extrudes your top and bottom plates um, using this assembly. And so you can add a whole bunch of detail into your models really quickly using these assemblies. And so they're fairly easy to create. They're a little intimidating the first time you run them, but once you figure them out, they're very simple to use. And so the way Way that they work is let's create a very simple assembly and we're going to call this one roof trusses and then within this we would click the plus button to add a component to this assembly so all I would do is just pick this from my model like this and then you can see how this gives you a preview of what this is going to look like. And right now, whenever it repeats this truss, you can see how it's gonna be facing the wrong direction. So we would just come in here and we would adjust that 90 degrees. You can see how now that truss is gonna face in the correct direction. And so now, if we were to add this as an assembly, you can see how this would quickly add in these trusses right here. And you might wanna go from the other direction. So you might wanna go from here to here and you can see how those trusses actually get added in um, in basically the correct location and you can also adjust if those uh, you can also adjust the left right offset of those if you decide that you want to but the really cool thing about this is this got brought in as an assembly so now if I wanted to adjust the spacing so these were at four feet I would just adjust that in my assembly then I would select this I would click on the button to apply assembly attributes and you can see how that actually comes in here and that adjusts the truss spacing based on whatever we add in here. So if these were at every two feet, which I know is really tight for truss spacing, but if they were, you can see how I could add those in here really quickly. And so we could do the same thing over here with this smaller truss really quickly. So we would just add this in here. So we could call this one small trusses and then come in here and do the same thing. So we could just add this component by clicking pick from model and then clicking on it and doing the same thing. So 90 degrees. And we'll do it from the other direction. And then in this situation, let's say that these trusses get added every three feet, which again, I think is a little tight, but that's okay. You can see how I can adjust that by clicking the apply assembly attributes really quickly. And so you can see how this allows you to create these smart assemblies, which can save you a whole bunch of time when modeling. And so another cool feature that's contained inside this extension is the hole cutter extension. What that allows you to do is that allows you to create openings inside of the assemblies you've created. And the way that works is you just activate the the tool, you dictate the size of the hole that you want to create and you click the plus button. And then you just click wherever you want to add the hole. So in this situation, I would click right here and it would actually come in here and cut this out um, to create this opening. Now I will note this doesn't come in here and add the uh, framing that would go around the inside. So if you wanted to get to that level of detail, you'd probably have to model that out yourself. But this is still a really easy way to add things like doors and windows inside of assemblies you can create. And so there's a lot of different applications for this extension. So like for example, you could create, and there's a lot of built-in assemblies, but you could create something like a stair. That actually adds in the pickets and the steps like this. 
And in this case, I'm just gonna adjust this so that it faces the other direction with the scale tool. You could definitely adjust those settings inside of Profile Builder as well. But you can see how quick it is to create this and then you could customize this with whatever width you want and things like that. And then you could also come in here with this edge and apply really any kind of railing that you want to that you have an assembly for. In this case, I'm just gonna use this one and then just apply that along this path. And so that would work with like curved paths as well. So if we had an arc like this one, you can see how this assembly would automatically add in things like your pickets and other things like that along this path. So this could be a big time saver, especially if you have a certain style that you usually create or something like that. And then another application I like for this tool is the ability to add fencing. So you can set up a fence like this one that'll actually follow along a terrain inside of your model. So if you have um, like a house that you're building on terrain or something like that, um, you can use an extension like Tools on Surface to draw a path along this face and then you can add this fence really quickly. And then you could add in another profile member if you wanted to. So you could just adjust your up, down, offset. So let's say this was to go up maybe 24 inches or maybe less than 24 inches, maybe 12. maybe 18 inches. You can see how you could quickly add in like another member for this or something like that. And all you have to do is click the update button in order to add that in here. So there's a lot of live editing you can do with your smart assemblies inside of Profile Builder. And then one other cool function is you can actually combine this with the extension quantifier which also comes from the guys over at Mindsight Studios and what that'll do especially if you're using these smart profiles you can use it for models that haven't been created with Profile Builder as well but it works really well with these profiles you can use that to actually quantify and pull a report of the different things inside of your assemblies. So for example, you could pull a profile report and you can see how this would actually give you the total length of two by six and the square footage of like OSB board and insulation. So you can see how this is really great for quantifying all of those things out. So you can get both of those extensions and tie them together to make, to make kind of a true smart model workflow. So that's where I'm going to end this video. You can see that this extension has a ton of architectural applications you could use this for. You can get the link for more information about this extension by downloading the architecture extensions guide at the sketchupessentials.com slash architecture extensions. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.